Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. Today we have the 10 things that no one tells you about music production. Hello everybody, thank you ever so much for joining me. These are the 10 things that no one tells you about music production. I really wanna get stuck into these. Of course, as ever, subscribe, but you can download the cheat sheet. It'll be around here or down there or both even. So download the cheat sheet. Number one, your first attempts at music production will not be good. It's okay, it is okay. When I first started, Oh, my production stuff was absolutely atrocious. And the biggest mistake I made was thinking I could make it great. I needed to learn. I needed to be creative. I needed to try things out. And instead, I got stuck on one song for absolutely ages. You need to move quickly, try ideas, Keep being creative, keep writing, keep recording, keep trying out new ideas. Getting stuck on one thing for an enormous amount of time will just hold you back. Plus, as your skill set grows, you can always go back to those original songs. You can open them up again and start muting all of those crazy overdubs that you did. Trust me, I have been there so many times. Your first productions will always not be that good. There is no magic bullet. It's all about working on it and keeping the creative juices flowing. Spending hours on minutia will drive you absolutely nuts. Keep creative. It's okay to suck. I did, and I still do. Number two, no one creates at the highest level all the time. It's acquired knowledge that gets me by most of the time. What happens is I'll have a session for sometimes for only three or four hours and I have to do guitar overdubs, maybe record a, a vocal and tweak a mix in three hours before moving to another client and do something else. We are usually multitasking three or four different things a day. In order for me to do that, I had to have a lot of acquired knowledge. The idea that I have to wait to be creative is just a fallacy. Um, it's one of those things, those myths that are propagated that you sort of sit there and wait for the creative juices to flow. The reality is, is that this is a career choice, so therefore it's a job. And I love it. I love it. But I have to work hard at it. And believing that the only time I can work is when I feel creative will mean I'll get nothing done. It is definitely acquired knowledge. So create regardless, always create. Work through those times when you feel like you're not at your most creative. I know what it's like to be sitting in a room and like working on a great groove and like putting down a bass line and really into it and you've got this funky idea that you wanna put down and boom, somebody walks in the room. Happens to me a lot. Happens to me when I'm working with artists and I'm trying to work on stuff. I probably have done it to them and taken them out of the zone. And it will destroy your focus. You'll lose that focus and it might take you 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes to get back to that place. However, that's life. It's life on life's terms. You have to get used to that. And the more you get through it, the more you experience it, the quicker you will bounce back to that place. But none of us work at our most creative peak all the time. We don't just turn it on like that. So we have to work up to it. You have to get to that zone. The focus comes from being focused. I know that sounds silly, but if you've got lots of distractions going at all times, then you're not really gonna just concentrate on the guitar part. If I can, I'll have somebody run the Pro Tools for me because I wanna just play guitar. The setbacks are always gonna come. They're never gonna go away. However, the way you deal with it is just to focus on what you're doing and you'll get through it. Three, you don't need to know everything in order to do music. I know what it feels like when you go into a forum and I've seen so many of those forums by so many quote unquote experts that know how to do everything perfectly. As hopefully you have seen when you watch me, I make mistakes all of the time. As George Bernard Shaw said, a life making mistakes is not only a more honorable one, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. The reality is, is that 
when you do things, when you create things, you will make mistakes. It is okay. And the way that you learn is to make those mistakes. You should be spending 80% of your time. Everybody talks about the 80-20 rule. Well, let's use 80-20 for this one. Spend 80% of your time making music. Spend 80% of your time producing, writing, playing, whatever it is. Spend that time. And then spend the maximum of 20% of your time going online, finding tutorials, seeking out information and stuff. And when you do seek out those tutorials, seek them out for a purpose. If you're working on something and you're having an issue with drum mixing or recording acoustic guitar or something like that, find videos specifically for that. Find information for that. Don't get caught into that trap of just watching endless amounts of everybody's opinion on, I don't know, you know how to record a, a Peruvian sphincter flute. That's a joke for somebody. Um, the point is, is like we cannot retain all this stuff. The best way to retain information is for it to be purpose driven. You have a problem, you go to solve it, you find a tutorial. You find Warren going, oh, I'll plug it in like this. Well, me, somebody else, it doesn't really matter. The point is you search out the information you need. Then you will retain it. Spend 80% of your time making music. And when you make mistakes in doing that, you will learn. You will learn faster than anything else. So you don't need to know everything in order to make music. You just need enough to get started. Don't let yourself be held back because you're in a forum and an expert is telling you, unless you're using this piece of equipment or that, whatever, then you can't make music. That's absolute baloney. Any DAW worth its salt, open it up, you can make music. To add further to that, number four, most of the tools that you think you need, you don't need at all. You just don't need them. These days, almost all of them have got some virtual instruments built in already. They've got some kind of basic drum programming in there as well already. Plus EQ, compression, delays, reverbs, limiters, you name it. Everything is built into your DAW. There's nothing stopping you from making great music. Once you get familiar with those tools, then maybe you'll see some limitations of one or two things. Maybe you'll see something else. Maybe you'll watch a video of somebody, some, somebody like me and you go, oh, I like that, that plugin. I think I'll try that out. But the reality is, is get to know the DAW you have. Learn that inside out, be familiar with it, and then add to that. A lot of the time, I'm using a lot of stock things. But when I'm not using stock things, I'm using plugins that I have used for ages. People come to me all the time and go, why don't you use the latest this or the latest that? And I'm like, well, there's 15 different types of that. And the new one's coming out next week. And I do love new plugins. I do. And I swap them out. If I've got a specific sound for one, I might find somebody else that makes a plugin that does it a little differently. However, I've been doing this a long time and have a lot of acquired knowledge. And I know when I want to improve on something because I've got used to using a lot of other equipment. So get yourself into that situation. A word I used earlier, a phrase I used earlier was acquired knowledge. You need to acquire the knowledge. And the reality is, is that you can make great music on your DAW with stock plugins. I've done mixes with stock plugins, live streaming ones. And many of my friends use 50% stock plugins and then just cherry pick. I know some guys that use 100% stock plugins in their DAW. You don't have to have all the latest and greatest to make great music. Just get started. Number five. Knowledge is fantastic, of course it's fantastic, but getting into the habit of working every day, working on your music and your music production is the most important thing you can do. It's great to search out all this information, love it. Absolutely fantastic. But like I was saying earlier, you should be searching it out for a reason to improve skills. Focus your time and your energy on creating the habit of making music. You're not going to get better unless you're actually working. Doing a lot of songs, working a lot on a lot of different genres, a lot of different styles within your genre will help you grow so much. You gain knowledge by making music. If you make music and you find you have a shortcoming, then you go and search out 
a way of solving that particular issue, something that's arisen. That's how you get better. So get into the habit of making music, of producing music, put that first. That is the most important thing. The knowledge will come as a result of doing that. Number six, people are the most important thing create great relationships. I cannot overstress this. And do the things that you don't want to do that get you those relationships. It's really difficult. I know I'm this guy who's got this YouTube channel and I've made all lots of lovely, wonderful records. But the reality is, is like I was super shy as a child. I had just a couple of friends and spent my life sitting in my parents' bedroom playing the guitar. And then when I left home super young, I went and played in a band and sat in my bedroom practicing guitar in order to go and play the show, and then went back to the bedroom and play guitar more. I, <laughs> I wasn't Mr. Personality. I did not hold out my hand. I wasn't that guy. And it took me a long time to get past that. But what really improved my life was building relationships with people. And further to that was embracing this, embracing YouTube, embracing social media, and getting myself out there. Having good relationships with people is really important. If you're one of those guys or girls that leaves comments on just how superior you are and how, how you know best and, you know, you're one of those, ah, you know, the kids should be doing it this way and that's not right and blah, blah, blah. You're not going to ingratiate yourself. You know, you want to be building relationships with people because there are many, many people that can do what I do. There are many, many great guitar players. There are many great bass players, drummers programmers, producers, engineers, mixers, songwriters. There's so many of them. And when you're sitting there, a person sitting there with their arms crossed, complaining that John, Fred, or whatever their friend is doing so much better. Well, I'll tell you why. We work with the people we like. There's 10,000 people running around at the moment that can do the job. Who do you work with? You work with the one that understands you, relates to you, can communicate with you, you can share ideas with, who respects you and you respect them. That is who you work with. You work with the people you like. So build relationships. The great thing about what we do is you don't have to be Mr. or Mrs. Personality. You don't have to be absolutely woo, all this kind of stuff. You just have to be somebody that is able to communicate, is humble. And that is a really, really, really important trait to have. So people are the most important thing in this business. If you make music with a band, you're going to have to work with all the artists. If you get signed to a record deal, you've got to deal with an A&R guy, a label manager, you know, you're going to have a publisher, you're going to have shows, you're going to have tour man. The point is promoters, you're going to meet a lot of people. You need to be able to interact well with them. So work on your relationships with people. It is the most important thing. And collaboration as a producer is huge. If you don't sing, who's gonna sing those songs you wrote? So collaborate, people are the most important part of what we do. Number seven, you don't have to be unhappy to make great music. You do not have to be unhappy to make music. I think I used to believe, and this goes on, follows on from what we were just talking about. I used to believe that I would have to sit in my bedroom, like depressed, playing songs in isolation, writing from my heart feelings that nobody else would understand. Well, you know what? We all understand. We all want to be loved. We all love validation. We all love it when people compliment us on what we do. We are human beings. We love to interact with each other. We love the feeling of relating to each other. And that doesn't come in isolation. So yes, there's a romanticism with people that are drug addicts or alcoholics and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of romanticism. But if you look at the facts, you look at guys like Dylan Thomas, who wrote Under Milkwood, talk about writing now. He became very famous after Under Milkwood, barely wrote another thing, hardly wrote anything after that, got into alcoholism, and of course, the rest is history. He's one of my favorite writers. I've read Under Milkwood countless times. I'm sure many of you love his work. So, and that's true of artists, and the list is so long of musicians that have died from drug addiction and alcoholism. It's a horrible list, but the reality is us over-romanticizing this 
is not healthy. Just because you've read that some artist or producer you admire has gone through some kind of addiction doesn't mean that you need to do it as well. Unhappiness is not the cure for making great music. You can enjoy us. It's okay to love and enjoy what we do. And trust me, there are plenty of days where I walk into the studio and I'm battling with my artist to get something great. And I don't have the best day. But you know what? I'm still blessed. And I still made a dollar for my family. And I still fed my family because what I do each and every day is do music for a living. I do YouTube to help show you what it's like to actually do music, but I'm not a professional YouTuber. This is what I do. I do music. I'm here to tell you it's not a clinical perfect world with like a perfect YouTube thing here and my hair, as we all know, is not absolutely perfectly done and I'm not reading a script and I haven't spent all week making my YouTube video. I am just doing this to show you and talk to you about what it's like to actually be in the trenches and make music every day. And I'm telling you, it's okay to be happy. It's okay to enjoy this. And it's okay, like we were talking about before, to build relationships and find other like-minded people. What I love about our community, the Produce Like a Pro community, is it's super, super positive, and we're all here to help each other. There are, you know, occasionally people coming along and telling us they know best, but you know what? I don't know best. I just know that each day I get up, every morning I get up, and I want to do this, and I want to give back to you, and I want you to learn from this experience. Number eight, get good at your instrument, but you don't have to be a virtuoso. The reality is, is like, I love playing guitar. If you watch my videos, I play guitar all the time. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. It's wonderful. And I play every day and each and every day and I play on all the stuff I produce, I co-write, all this kind of stuff. Wow, fantastic. However, I have so many friends that are great producers, engineers and mixers and even songwriters, guys and girls that are really, really talented at their job and they play guitar like, hmm. they can barely play four or five chords. They're not virtuosos, but they make amazing music. So it's kind of a catch-22 because I do believe that being good at an instrument will help you. But don't think that you have to be good at an instrument to make music. You don't. You know, I think of all of my favorite songwriters. All of my favorite songwriters, with only a handful of exceptions, were just average musicians. If I think of, I don't want to call anybody out, but you think of Dylan, you know? Is Dylan a virtuoso guitar player? Is he note tapping? No, I don't think so. Is Neil Young? Neil Young's a great guitar player, don't get me wrong. But is he like shredding? Is he like playing like weird jazz inversions? No, he's just writing great songs. There are a couple of exceptions, of course. Tom Petty. Tom Petty's famous quote was, if I'd been a great guitar player, I would have been a bad songwriter. So I think it's important to grow all of your talents, but don't let one talent or lack thereof of one particular area hold you back into thinking you can't do another. I do believe very strongly in being able to play an instrument. However, I know because I have so many great friends that are good at their jobs. You don't have to be a virtuoso musician to be an amazing producer. So get started. If you don't yet play an instrument, but you've got a DAW and you can get a keyboard out and you can do some programming and start and you've got an ear, just do it. Get started. Number nine, work for your goals. Don't buy into this idea that your heroes just woke up one morning all geniuses. I absolutely love Queen. I talk about it all the time. I like the Beatles. I like Pink Floyd. I like The Who. I like a lot of music. I like a lot of modern bands. I love Muse. Muse are amazing. Do I believe that any of those guys or girls, Joni Mitchell, huge fan, do I think that any of them woke up and just wrote, did Queen write Bohemian Rhapsody when they were nine years old? No. They grew into that. It was 1975 that they made that album. And those guys were in their late 20s. They weren't 14, 15 years old. And they had been making records for a few years. They had struggled to get a record deal to get that. The Beatles, great songwriters. But if any of you read Malcolm Gladwell, you'll know 
There's a great quote where he says the Beatles, by the time they made their first album, because of all of those long 12-hour shifts, six, seven days a week they were in Hamburg for months at a time, he said the Beatles have played more shows up until that point when they made the first album than you two have done in their whole career. The point is, is like if you're playing 12 hours a day for three months, seven days a week, and not only are they playing all those hours, they're doing covers of some of the greatest songs ever written. They're going to be really great at their craft. They didn't just wake up as geniuses like, oh, I'm going to write Hey Jude. That's not how it worked. They worked really, really hard. So it doesn't separate any of these artists into this certain echelon. It just says one thing, that you can be these people. You can be that great at your job if you also do all of that work. And not only doing the work, but focusing the work like we were talking about earlier. So do the work and focus it and you can do it. I did not have a naturally good ear when I wanted to play music. I loved music, but I wasn't one of these kids that just picked it up and went, oh, we're just gonna tune the guitar, oh, that's perfect. It wasn't me. There was other kids around me that were just like far more quicker at picking stuff up than I were far quicker. And so for me, I had to work harder at it. But of course, within six months, I was a lot better because I put hours and hours and hours into it. Those first six months, my fingertips were bleeding every day. But I wanted that. It's I wanted it. The drive, the focus, and the pushing myself to get better was a bigger part of my development than anything else. So this whole idea that there's all these geniuses running around and you'll never be one is just a myth. It's a huge myth. You can do this. And you, want, you can do it whether you're five or 95. You can get better at what you do. And to be honest, if you're older, you may also have that ability to be able to focus because you've trained yourself and you've learned so many things. They say that when you're young, you're a sponge. Of course you are. When you're young and you don't have a huge amount of knowledge and you want to focus in it, of course you'll pick it up super quickly. But when you get older, you also have the ability to be able to get to the point and focus because you've done so many of those things in your life. So don't let age be an issue. It doesn't matter if you're super young or super old. Just get stuck in there and remember it's all about the work. Number 10, last but no means least, number 10. Good artists borrow, great artists steal. Okay, so this will start off a war of words here. Now, I'm sure it will, because there's all the obvious things. Um, in the late 60s, bands like Led Zeppelin, etc., very famously took really, really famous blues licks and blues um, lyrics and all kinds of things and rewrote the songs. And we all know that. Bands before that, blues, British R&B bands, were taking the blues from America. Uh, they were taking folk songs. People were taking all kinds of stuff. But there's some even more obvious things than that. For instance, I was thinking the other day about John Lennon, um, I'll Be Back. And I'll Be Back is the A minor G, F, E, and then he modulates and takes it to a major key and goes to A major. And it bears a remarkable resemblance to Del Shannon's Runaway. So I went online, typed it all in, and John Lennon is talking about how he took the runaway chord sequence, how he loved that idea of that descending A minor G, F, E. With Del Shannon, I think it was B flat minor, it was a semitone higher. But he took that chord sequence where it then resolves to the major and rewrote another song over it. Both are great songs. Runaway is a masterpiece, I'll Be Back is a really great song. Um, but that is the point. If Something like that is gonna spark off your creativity. I'm not talking about taking somebody's record and literally stealing a piece of their song and putting it in your song. But if you pick up an acoustic guitar and you hear something that inspires you, then right away. I mean, so many great songs that are sparked from other ideas. And also, just think about how much better music it is when you listen to one genre and pull it into your own. If you listen to metal and you do country, you get one, you get a new genre. If you listen to hip hop and you put it into country, you get something else. If you listen to jazz, metal, you know, Hawaiian folk music, you name it. The point is, is like that blend, taking ideas from different places and pulling them together will create the most amount of creativity. So don't be afraid to try new stuff out. Don't 
get held back with people saying, well, that sounds like, because by the time you've finished, you'll have a new song and a new production. It's an old phrase, good artists borrow, great artists steal. All right, thank you ever so much for watching. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Of course, you can download the cheat sheet around here and um, get a recap on all of this stuff. Thank you everybody here for being such an incredible community. Please leave a bunch of comments and questions below and I'll see you all again very soon.